the first building built in Tulsa in the Art Deco style was the Medical Arts Building, which is now demolished, but was located down on the corner of 6th and Boulder. Uh, it's really amazing that a city like Tulsa in the middle of the United States would have an Art Deco building that early. Essentially, the buildings that we refer to as Art Deco date from a period after 1925. In 1925 in France, there was an exhibition of industrial and decorative arts, and I won't burden you with my French pronunciation, but there was an exhibition of uh, decorative and industrial arts, and they sort of, that exhibit sort of showcased the motifs and the style that we know of as Art Deco. The term Art Deco itself was not used until the 1950s to describe these buildings which are like the Pythian building that we're standing in today and the Medical Arts Building which was built in 1926. Tulsa during that period was a wash in oil money and the people who were in charge of building buildings and sort of creating the cityscape that we know of as Tulsa were extremely anxious that their buildings be the most modern in the world. They wanted Tulsa to have this extremely progressive look to it that was sort of indicative of what they planned to happen in the community at large. So for that metaphor of a progressive city, they used a progressive or modern art form which was called Art Deco. So beginning in 1926, there began an entire rash of construction in the Art Deco style. It's sort of amazing that two of the most, well actually all three of the public utilities, which generally tend to be the most conservative bodies on earth, uh, chose Art Deco, which was cutting ed architecture for their headquarters buildings in the city of Tulsa. What, what makes a building Deco go? Uh, buildings can be deco buildings based upon their period of time that they were constructed. For example, anything past 1925 is not necessarily deco. And you can't look at materials because Art Deco used a lot of terracotta. It was an inexpensive way to get the decorative effects that they wanted on their buildings. But just because it's terracotta does not necessarily mean that it's Art Deco because many buildings done in different decorative styles use terracotta as well. Art Deco is a look and it's real hard to describe. It's one of those things you know it when you see it. Uh, one of the things that really accentuates it though is a play with geometric patterns. Uh, they like to use this 45 degree angle over and over and over again in repetition. They also like to use circles a lot. For example, at a conference that I attended, it was the World Conference on Art Deco, the first annual one ever held in Miami Beach, a gentleman got up and presented a paper on the fact that when you see round windows in Art Deco structures, you see them singularly, or you see them in threes, or you see them in fives. You always see them in odd numbers, and he's looked like every building in America that's got a round window, and for that matter, all over the world, and he's never found one with two windows. Uh, uh, so round windows, glass blocks, those are materials that were used. But you know, by and large, you can't say just because the materials exist that it's deco. It has to have the other elements of it as well. Uh, it's a difficult criteria, as I said, that you just have to know it when you see it. The Adams Building is often confused here, or Adams Hotel, I guess it was called, mm -hmm. and, and people look at that and yeah. it's deco, but why is that not deco? People come to the Historical Society and say, I really do like Tulsa's Art Deco buildings. My favorite, and invariably it's these two, my favorite is either the Adams Hotel or the Mid-Continent Building. Well, both of those buildings are sheathed in terracotta. In the case of the Adams Hotel, it's done in a polychrome or multicolored terracotta, whereas the Mid-Continent is just a single color. But even though it's terracotta, it's not deco. The Adams Hotel is a style that is more or less called Portuguese Baroque, for lack of a better term. And it was a style that's sort of like a mishmash of everything architectural that can happen working into a decoration that you saw in like movie theaters. Uh, the Ritz Theater, which is now demolished, was an example of that Portuguese Baroque style, just highly overwrought. Mid-continent building, if you're to look at the actual style that the terracotta is done in, it's done in something like Venetian Renaissance. It has a a lot more to do with the Doge's Palace in Venice than it has anything to do with Rockefeller Center, let's say. What about this building? Give us a little history of the, what we know now as the Pythian building. Okay. If there is ever an example of how a building can be used as an indicator of a community's history, the Pythian building and just generally this intersection of Fifth and Boulder is it. 
Pythian Building was started in 1952 by two gentlemen who were involved in the oil and real estate building, Mr. Tyrrell and Mr. Gillette. Uh, they started the building and the plans for the building in 1929, and in 1929, of course, the crash came. Uh, along with the crash came a complete total decimation of the oil industry because at one point oil was just almost being given away to get it out of off the hands of companies. Uh, the plans for the building because of the you know, decrease in the economy resulted in the fact that their original plans were for a 13-story building. The first three floors were going to be a shopping arcade that we were standing in and then it was going to have two floors of offices and then the top ten floors were going to be a hotel and it was all going to be crowned with this sort of art deco polychrome wedding cake thing that would have just been bava. I mean it would have been gorgeous. Uh, however, the depression came. so. The only thing that was realized was these first three floors. So in the interior of this building is? The interior of this building, as I said, it was done, uh, this building was designed by Edward W. Saunders and it was done in 1929 and completed in 1930. And it's really a spiffy interior. First of all, you've got all the geometric patterns that happen on the tile, on the floors, and on the walls. Each one of the sort of like keynote patterns or tiles up at the top are different. And you can go through the building and see that some craftsman has really worked to give each one of them a different look. And I think that's very nice. We don't do that in buildings anymore. And then the ceiling is just real knocked out. I mean, we have this plaster. All of this was molded into place. And um, the plaster was colored, so we wind up with something that looks more or less like an oriental rug, except it's made out of tile and plaster, and you're just sort of wrapping yourself in this rug, and that's the interior of this building. The tile work in the building is very significant. Uh, it's significant in the fact that it shows a human hand. Today we so often see buildings where everything is machine made. And you can take a walk through the Gillette Terrell Building's lobby and you can see that someone went to the trouble that when you get to the top tile in the design scheme that each one of the center tiles is different. Somebody actually stopped to think about how can we make each one of these a different look and have variety in the building and it was more cost you know, prohibitive, but they went ahead and did it. You can notice how this tile is different from this tile, which is different from the next tile. And I've gone through this building and no two have ever been repeated. And I think that's very special. Is this, this is just plain, no, this is just plain ceramic tile like you'd have in your bathroom. Uh, the technology of ceramic tile dates back to the Romans. Uh, and Art Deco, they revived it in a big way. Tile work is very significant in Art Deco design schemes. One of the things about Art Deco buildings is they're going to be around for a long time because materials like this were built to last forever. Uh, it's one of those old sayings when they say they don't build things like they used to. This is proof positive. Uh, many buildings use tile work today and you can walk in and you see that the tile is not holding up as well as something such as this. Keep in mind this building was done, opened in 1930, and you look at the floor and with the possible exceptions of two or three dings where something was probably dropped on it that was very heavy, the tiles holding up today. Uh, great materials were used in these structures. We're looking at the floor. We're going to sweep up to me? Oh, this is a motion shot. I wasn't in on this, you know? So, okay, in addition to the tile work on the walls and the floor of the Gillette Tyrrell building, the ceiling is an absolute delight as well. Uh, the ceiling is made out of plaster. This isn't ceramic tile. It's plaster that was molded into shape up here above the, from the mezzanine, I'm standing in the mezzanine right now, but over the lobby. Uh, you can see that once again we wind up with triangles, there are triangles here, there are triangles here done in diamond patterns, there are triangles here, there are triangles there, there are triangles up there. Uh, was molded into place and then somebody came back and you get up and you can see the detail of handwork once again on this where somebody has painted the colorful pattern that fills in each one of the vacant spots. Uh, this was done with somebody working by hand with a little paintbrush taking a lot of care and a lot of precision to make sure that this sort of Persian carpet of a ceiling uh, winds up with a wonderful, wonderful, colorful display. They wanted you, when you walked into this, think that it was open up to the sky. And of course it's not. There's the second and third floor above us. So this is sort of like 
fluorescent lighting but with real high dollar etched glass panels over it to give a sense of daylight coming down into the lobby of the building. One of the most interesting tours that one could make of downtown Tulsa buildings if you really had time for it was uh, go around and look at mailboxes in the lobbies of buildings. Here at the Gillette Tyrrell building you can see that there's this wonderful, wonderful bronze art deco mailbox that has the triangulation that you see a lot in art deco buildings, triangles here, triangles there, the geometric pattern. You can see that there isn't anything like a flower or a person or anything that's recognizable in all this decoration but it's completely and totally decorated and it's all done with just straight geometry. Uh, once again, the material that this is made out of was the best kind of material that existed in the day and we're not making good mailboxes like this anymore. Uh, one of the things that as mail services change, the mailboxes have become more and more functional and just beautiful pieces like this are no longer in existence.